Hi guys and welcome back to the E36 M3 Touring Project. As you can see I've got the S50 B32 in front of me and if you've been following along you will see last time that like I said this was about as far as I wanted to get without any professional help and that's where Steve who you might better know as Mr Vanos comes in he is my professional help <laughs> and what we're going to do is look at the Vanos. So Steve you've got a lot of experience with these engines don't you? We do we've been doing the Vanos units now for 14 years coming up so yeah. we have seen various things and any sort of issues and every type of issue you can imagine now really. Yeah and then um, you've moved on to building engines as well from there. Yeah it basically was a natural progression so I started doing Vanos units that then led to people saying oh I need my engine doing at the same time or something's failed so just a natural progression was to do a Vanos move into engines and then now basically we just do engines and sort of Vanos units and that's it. There's a lot of talk about Vanos failures and obviously a lot of engines have Vanos units. Yep. Um, so was it introduced on the E39 um, or was it the S early ones of these, wasn't it? S53 litre, so the B30 yeah, yeah, engine had a single perfect. Vanos which was basically a two-stage Vanos unit mm. where it just fired the cam once at one RPM and then again. It wasn't constantly variable like the later cars. Mm. Um, that was developed on the McLaren F1, believe it or not, oh, okay. which is essentially two, three litres together. Mm. Um, being to be wanted a road car engine, they said, right, well, we'll cut a McLaren F1 engine in half, yeah. hence the three litre straight six. Makes sense. Um, M3 Evo engine, which is this one, S50, that then changed to a double Vanos intake and exhaust. Mm. The, which means it controls both of Both these. camshafts, yeah. yeah. And it also changed to constantly variable. So at any given point, any given RPM throttle input, mm. the camshaft puts in the optimum timing for that performance or economy at whichever yeah. revs it is. So. so is that where you see a lot of the performance increase on the B32 over the B30 then? Or? Not particularly, no. I mean, no. A, a good three litre is very close to a 3.2, but the refinement's there. Ah, okay. And so the MPG's better. Yeah, and I suppose a lot of the development at this point especially is all about MPG, not really yeah. power, isn't it? Yeah, yeah so and just refinement as a road car. The three litre M3 is more of a race car for the road, mm. yeah. where the 3.2 is much more refined, yeah. much quieter, much a daily car. You know, it's when BMW decided we're going to start making these and try and sell mm. them mass, uh, rather than just sort of limited numbers. And yeah. From that point onwards, they just said, right, we'll make a more refined and a much more usable road car. So Yeah, that makes sense completely. So the unit on this, I don't think it's as bad as kind of on the E46s. Is it um, failure-wise and that kind of thing? The unit itself on this is more complicated in size. You've got a lot more seals and a lot more moving parts to it. An E46 has fewer parts inside mm -hmm. the actual case in itself, yep. but there's more to go wrong, more from the engine side. So yeah. cam gears and chain guides, uh, bolts that come loose, where this doesn't happen on this engine. Yeah. So this is the last of the over-engineered engines, I would say, where everything was built to last rather than built to a cost. Well, so, it's good to know that that's what this is yeah, because yeah. I'm not changing the engine. No, so. no definitely not. It's, it, it, they are a good engine. The E46 is a bit lighter inside, it revs a bit harder, but mm. in terms of performance, there's very little difference in them really. Yeah. So. Okay, so for next step, let's get the Vanos off. Yep. And then we start rebuilding it. And I'm really interested to take a look inside and kind of see how an actual Vanos unit works. Yep. Because I understand what Vanos does, but I have no idea what happens inside. So. Yeah, it's quite straightforward. I mean, yeah. we basically looked at it when we started that rather than looking at it as an M3 engine and being sort of blown away how complex the mechanics of how it works is, mm. take the unit off and you look at it as a hydraulic unit. Yeah. And if you look at that part and repair the hydraulic part unit, then after that, it's quite straightforward to do. So. Okay, great. So let's get back into taking the Vanos off and we'll yep. go from there.
Okay, so we've got the Vanos unit stripped out and Steve's got it on a little table here to take a look at. So what are we looking at, Steve? Because I've never had one of these out. This is a very familiar, like, familiar site for you. Yeah, it okay. is, yeah. I mean, this is essentially the cause of all the talk on forums over the years. It is the double Vanos unit off an M3 Evo. Um, essentially, that is just a hydraulic unit. There's mm -hmm. nothing more to it. When we first started doing this, it was difficult to sort of comprehend how it worked and what worked and how it sort of connected to the car. And once we removed it the first time, we basically just looked at a hydraulic unit and thought, right, its sole purpose in life is just to basically hydraulically move that gear in mm -hmm. and out on both sides. Yeah. The clever part is the ECU control and how it moves and when. But in terms of what this does, it just basically goes in and goes out of the gears in the car. When it does that, there's a helical cut on there. And as it does, as it comes out, it rotates quite difficult when there's oil pressure in, yep. but it basically <laughs> rotates the cam as it's turning in the engine. And yep. it is that simple. So and that's when, that's what changes the timing. That adjusts the camshaft timing as it does it. On a double Vanos engine like this, it is infinitely variable, so it depends on RPM, temperature, uh, throttle position. It depends on how much it wants to set the timing, advance or retard it, basically. Yeah. So that's that. Um, First thing on this unit when we stripped it is really common with this car. They have a plastic washer in that holds the needle bearings in the back of the oil pump. Okay. They're normally out, to be honest. They're sometimes in the sump, but more often than not, they are loose. Um, the reason being is the early cars, rather than having a circlip like this, yeah. they had a little spring clip inside here, which you can barely see. And that basically wasn't big enough to hold this plastic washer in. So yeah, and then it would let it move and break. Yeah, and yeah. we have seen needle bearings come out and end up in the sump occasionally mm. because there's been nothing to stop them coming out. So yeah, that's that. Yeah, uh, it's like you were saying about how you didn't know until you took them apart. Yeah. Because I feel like I know a fair amount about cars, yeah. but I have no idea how this vanity unit works. Yeah. yeah. I know what it does. Yeah. It changes timing, which lets you make more power kind of thing. Yes. But yeah. I don't know how. So it's going to be interesting for me to see inside this. Yeah. So you have two solenoids, one either side, one controls inlet, one controls exhaust. Yep. They're basically triggered by the ECU in the car, depending on camp sensor position and throttle position, as we said. Mm. So the Vanos unit uses um, pressure, so it's using the engine oil, essentially. Yeah, engine oil's fed from the oil pump into the back of the unit here, which then generates its own pressure from engine oil pressure, which is roughly sort of three or four bar, mm -hmm. then it generates up to 120. That then fires through a series of passageways that are drilled into the casting of the unit. Yep. One goes to the exhaust side, which in the car will be that way around. So you've got the exhaust and the inlet. Yep. The solenoids then fire oil through another passageway, which runs into the back of the pistons here. And that essentially just says, I want to fire the gear out. Yeah. Or I want to retract the gear back in. And it can sit anywhere in between that range of movement, whether it's halfway, all the way. And wherever it is, is the degrees of timing. So yeah. the exhaust side is zero degrees to 45 degrees of timing advance. And the inlet goes up to 60 degrees. Hmm. And anywhere in between that is depending on the car, where it yeah. wants to be. So and then the sheer high pressure that it runs, because yeah. you say 120 bar, that's gonna yeah, roughly go 120 like, bar, yeah. So go through bone, skin. Quite easy, yeah. I mean, yeah. If, if you got your finger in there when it was running, it would, nothing left of it, yeah. to be fair. And that's obviously why that's causing the wear rate, because yes. it's under such sheer pressure. Yeah, it's too much pressure. There is far too much pressure in there. Um, it's the first variation of it, and at the time, BMW decided, well, that's what we need to do to generate. They thought that generating that much pressure would give it ample pressure to sort of fire the gear against the engine, which it does, it, it's exactly right. But because it's an external unit, it probably needs a bit more pressure behind it mm. than the, what the modern BMWs use, which is on the end of the cam yeah. with a cog that uses engine oil pressure, and they generally don't fail now. So. Yeah, I've noticed looking at kind of when we do S55 stuff, yeah. it has nothing like this kind of unit, because no. now it's all internal to no. the, yeah. it's the, Without taking one apart, which we haven't done, we don't fully understand what's in there, but it uses engine oil pressure, and it sort of, it rotates the cam in pretty much the same way, but on the chain wheel itself, mm. rather than using a separate spline gear to push yeah. the cam around as itself. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but then that's twenty years of innovation, kind of. It is. It is. It's basically so. they've just decided, they've just refined it over the years. Yeah. The, the process has got better and better. Um, the V10 M5, I would say, probably is the last car that had a Vanos unit and a separate oil feed, but they had an oil pump in the sump. Um, yeah. Again, problematic because of 115, 120 bar and mm. needle bearings failure. And that's yeah. the kind of last BMW engine that ran 
the external a st external pipe work and external pump separate from the engine oil pressure and yeah. that's really the last car that has any sort of issues funny yeah. enough so yeah yeah everything after that is generally much more reliable so yeah okay great so i'm pretty excited to see what's inside of this so let's start getting it open is the retainer for the oil pump that's an early part uh, BMW did modify into these at some point in production yeah um, but that spring clip basically is the reason why you find that plastic hanging out the back of the unit mm. so what you do is use the metal one from the yep. 46 M3 which obviously can't break or break down mm. with time and more often than not, you find this kind of sir clip in an Evo, but occasionally you don't. But that basically means that that goes like that. So when you say sometimes you find it in Evo, is that because this is possibly just an early unit? This is a very early unit, rebuilt? yeah. This is a very early one, actually. Yeah. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen a unit, an oil pump with those holes that have been plugged. So this is one of the very first ones I made, I'm guessing. Oh, that's interesting. But BMW knew there was an issue. I'm, long before Avanos is ever a problem with the public. So yeah, they've changed it. They've changed it already. And there's actually a technical bulletin about that. If you found a car in the workshop, BMW would replace the unit automatically if they found it with that yeah. sir clipping. So it's only really early production M3 Evos, really. So. Okay, so mine was a 97, so it was... Depends how long it's been sat. Yeah, because that's the thing. It depends when it was produced. It could have been a press car. It might yeah. have been one of the very first cars made. If it mm. was, that that is an early sort of car. Generally yeah. speaking, anything from 97 onwards has the circlip with that. Yeah. They all had a plastic washer in, mm. E36s, and that 46 came with... The metal one. The metal one. But So these are common for breaking up and ended yeah. up in the stump. Yeah. Does that then a bad failure if that happens? Not particularly, no. I mean, because it's made of plastic, it just breaks up. Yeah. Um, the biggest issue is if your needle bearings do fall out from inside of there, they end up in the sump and through the oil pump. Yeah. In the front half of the pickup. So that can be a problem. Yeah. So is that probably the most catastrophic failure that could happen? In terms of the oil pump side of things, yeah. That will potentially cause some damage. If they fall out and go through the timing chain, you can end up with a bit of a mess. Uh, yeah. But it's very rare. I think I've seen it half a dozen times okay. in the hundreds and hundreds we've done. So it's not that common, but yeah. it can happen. <laughs> Here is the piston from the exhaust side of the unit. Yep. Um, that slots into this bore and that essentially is what oil pressure runs on the back side and the fore side and basically fires the spline in and out of the unit. Yeah. Um, the common thing we find with these is the top half of that smashed across there, mm -hmm. which obviously loses pressure, but it doesn't function properly. You can also just about make out that as over time as a seal wears, it runs metal to metal inside the bore. Uh, yeah. It's that polished edge there. Mm -hmm. It just means it loses oil pressure over time. It never yeah. loses all of its oil pressure and it still functions, but it just means it's not functioning as it should do. It's yeah. not, not 100%. So these are the solenoids inside the unit. This is the only electrical connection to the car from the Vanus unit. And in all fairness, this is probably the biggest cause of Vanos issues with this car. Um, they fail electrically, they get blocked up with old oil and dirt inside of them, uh, solder breaks on the joints here. Mm -hmm. And the other thing which is not that commonly known is there's a diode inside this plug. Uh, it's basically a three pin plug with a common earth. And it's fairly common that the diodes burn out and that can cause all sorts of issues with the car. Yeah. Um, we have seen when the diode breaks that when you try and activate the Vanos in the computer, it triggers a fuel pump, weirdly. And oh, because it's, it's crossing. It's uh, crossing over and back feeding through the mm. ECU and it can destroy the ECU. It can also burn wiring. I've seen quite a few melted wiring looms because of this. So yeah. running issues, generally speaking, unless you find a broken piston on the top, like we said before, mm -hmm. running issues generally come from solenoids. Mm. Because it's not activating at all. Not activating or seals are broken around the solenoid and there's lack of oil pressure. So, yeah. um, they are the 
probably say the biggest cause of running problems with this with this particular mm. unit. So. so, as part of the rebuild, is there anything you do with those, or is it a case of if they are working, they work, and if they're not, found the company that made the plugs. Um, so we cut the plugs off if the die was gone, because as you can see, it's a sealed factory part. There's no way to get in there. So yeah. cut the plugs off, repin them, rewire them with a with a matching plug, mm -hmm. uh, replace diodes across them, and. If, as long as the wiring is not melted, you can use the wiring again. Yeah. Um, if not, we have to replace the wiring as well, which is it's tedious, to say okay. the least, but it's, it's doable. Yeah. But because of the cost of the solenoids from BMW, they used to be £100 a pair when we first started. They're now £1,400 a pair. So it's, yeah, that's a lot you, have of money. To, you have to repair them. You know? yeah. And they're getting few and far between now. So, mm. um, yeah, you can generally repair them as a rule. Yeah. And that's the thing, especially on these cars of these age, if it can be repaired, it's probably the best way to go now because there's only a finite source of parts. BMW are pretty good at supporting older cars, but yeah. there will be a point when they will stop or the prices will become ridiculous. It's a cost thing as well. I mean, if you've got somebody that's wanting to do it on a car that they're restoring and they say, right, well, actually, we need to spend another £2,800 on solenoids, mm. it puts the price of a vanish job to over £4,000. Yeah. And it just makes it... It's not unviable, but it certainly... It, it, the, people won't do it. You know? Yeah, I mean, at the moment, you're buying a S50 for six... Yeah, yeah. And so you can buy it with there. the solenoids. Yeah. yeah. So you might so. as well just you go down that route. You'd probably buy a, a, a second-hand unit would yeah. be better. Best. So yeah. it's, it's easier now to repair them. But mm. the good thing is repairing it. You're eliminating the diode that's sealed, and replacing it with one that isn't sealed. So if it does fail in future, you can easily repair it. Yeah. So that's the simplest way to do it. All right. So then next step, they come out then. Yeah. Just remove these. On a car that's been used or got a few miles of solenoids aren't really that tight in there anymore. Mm. The seals have worn and they've compressed, made of rubber, rather than what we use is Viton seals, which don't compress as much and obviously yeah. don't leak past as hard. Yeah. Yeah, so this unit had about 95, maybe 100,000 miles on it. Whether it was ever had anything done before, obviously don't know, but... It's usually difficult to tell what's been done. Mm. Um, it looks fairly original, yeah. to be honest. I would say it's never been a part. So. With the amount of wear and that kind of thing? Yeah, it just looks, you can normally tell. So. A yeah. common issue that we do see a lot of, which is difficult to see with all this oil, but uh, inside of here, where the solenoids actually fit, you've got two bars. The smaller one at the bottom here, it's quite common on this exhaust side, mm -hmm. that the end up with a groove in there and the reason you end up with a groove is where the seals shrink over time yeah it allows the solenoid to ever so slightly twist in the unit like that mm -hmm. rather than being held with the pressure of the seal and what happens is you can just about make it out it starts to polish that edge there and eventually if the seal rips away and oil pressure goes past it can snap the end of the solenoid off Oh, wow. If it does that, it also leaves a mark in the bar, mm. which means you put a new solenoid in and a new seal, it never actually seals fully. Yeah, because you've That's a the really oil. common thing that we've sold seal kits to people because they've had an oil leak, but they haven't seen the damage in the bar. Yeah. And no matter what you do, solenoids or any kind of seals, it'll never seal because oil goes past the little groove that's machined yeah. over time in the bar. So we can repair it. We have got a ream that's slightly oversized, and we just basically mm. ream it out an oversized seal job sorted yeah um, but it's a it's a really common thing that we used to see not so much now because people are wise to it yeah but we used to see it a lot where they put seal kits in or seals or solenoids and it wouldn't mm. fix it so yeah so another thing i've seen with the vanos units is people mention that the bolts snap but no one never seemed to know why yeah do you know why we do know why yeah and it's really simple um once you know how obviously um <laughs> once you know why so that cover sits over there like that yeah you have the bolts that go in there and your solenoid lives under there, as we've seen when we're taking them out. So because these seals don't last that well in oil, made of rubber, yeah. they, they lose the sort of tension on them. And what can happen is the solenoid can rock ever so slightly like this in the bore. Yep. As it does that, it pushes against the inside of the cover, which you can see there, the wear marks where it sits in Yeah, you in can there. see where it obviously presses yep. against it. So the more the seal wears and the more oil pressure can escape past the seal, and the mic can twist ever so slightly, mm. it puts more and more pressure on onto this, bo this bolt here. Yep. The more pressure you put on the bolt as the seal wears, it just, the bolt can't take it. 
and yeah. it basically just shears off and you end up with a car with a bolt there, some snapped off heads and the cover like this. And as it does that, 120 bar of oil pressure, six yeah. litres of oil comes out at quite a rate of knots. And then that's your Oil pressure light comes on and if you're really lucky and you catch it, I've done quite a few where they've caught it and the engine's been absolutely fine. Or if yeah. you un more often than not, what happens is the engine oil pressure light comes on and you've done a crank bearing. Yeah. And that's it. It's yeah. then a rebuild. Because you've literally just pumped all your oil yeah. over your radiator. Over the engine bay, un <laughs> underside, all down the motorway, if it's yeah. gone down the motorway, and it makes a real mess. So yeah. I have seen it quite a lot. There was a modified bolt from BMW back sort of late 90s and they changed the tensile of the bolt mm -hmm. but it didn't really fix the problem it just stopped a catastrophic failure i guess but they still it. snapped if as oh, time's still... gone by because mm. the solenoids were getting more and more worn and if there was a groove in that unit in particular in the bottom yeah the solenoids would twist more and more and eventually mm. it doesn't matter what bolt you put in there it will yeah. just snap. well it's like we were saying like 120 bar pressure yeah it doesn't take much pressure to lot. snap a little <laughs> tiny m6 bolt yeah so yeah the, the trick is to fix the problem of the seals being too small from the factory mm and put, we make a D-ring, which is a perfect fit for the groove. Yep. It's slightly oversized in its diameter for the ball, and it just means it can't twist. Yeah. And then by doing that with an even stronger bolt, it eliminates the problem yeah. for good, basically. So. Which I guess is the running theme over this whole unit, really, is through your years of experience, you've gone through and found all yeah. the points that yeah. either BMW didn't know yeah. about or maybe budget constraints, yeah. 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 and you're just refining this unit to something that should be it's, I think it's Pretty because it's the first of its technology, um, the first sort of generation of it. They were just experimenting what mm. worked and what did. And that, at the time, this was the best way they could find to yeah. get what they wanted, which yeah. is 100 horsepower per litre from an M3 Evo. So mm. and they found that making the valve time and did that, and how, how can we make it work? So yeah. it was, there's nothing wrong with the design as such, it's just longevity is yeah. not there. So all we're doing now is just looking at the points. So we know that's a failure point. We know that the oil pump disc is a fairly point. We know that the seals can shrink over time and cause damage to the piston. Yep. You're just eliminating all that from yeah. happening again, basically. So Yeah, and I suppose the other thing is the best wheel in the world. This car, this one's 34 years old now. No, it's like 24 years yeah, old. Yeah. And BMW probably built them more to last back then, but still 24 years is a long time to... It's done well. Yeah. You think, I mean, in terms of hydraulic engineering, mm. if... Um, Hydraulics don't last forever. It's just yeah. a natural thing, you know. Yeah. If someone could come up with a hydraulic part that lasted forever, they'd be a rich man overnight. Yeah. Because it's used in every industry, you know. So mm. it just it is literally a hydraulic unit. It's worn out parts where you can improve it and improve the life of it. And that's basically yeah. all we've done. So. Yeah. So at this point, we're pretty much almost done. We've just got this one cover left to take off, don't we? Yeah, one cover on the inlet side which is a slightly different arrangement in how it works compared mm -hmm. to the exhaust side, the shape of the piston. Um, it works the same way with the solenoid fires oil pressure yep. to fire the gear in and out, but yeah. it is ever so slightly different mm -hmm. in terms of how it functions. Okay, let's get that off. So is that the other piston? This is the other piston, slightly different design to that yeah. side, um, but it works basically the same way. It just basically, oil pressure runs on the back of it mm -hmm. to force the piston in or out. Yeah. Um, but it is, it's essentially the same thing. Yeah, it does yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly the same job, both sides. At that point, is the unit fully stripped down, isn't it? Um, pretty much. There is just the Vanos filter to take out, which we'll always take out for wash. So okay. when they get cleaned, that every passageway gets cleaned out just in case there's any old oil in there. Mm. Uh, old oil is not good for the solenoids or any congealed or parts of dirt that gets in there blocks the solenoid so the cleaner it is the better really. Yeah. So last remaining part to come out for the completely stripped unit is the pressure valve on the side. So is this what regulates to the 120? Essentially yes. Yeah. So the oil pressure comes out of here generated mm -hmm. by the radial pump. It then flows through the unit and this is set. So a preset by the factory, roughly 120 bar. Yeah. It can be a bit less when you measure it, mm. but that regulates the flow of oil through the unit. Any excess oil that's generated above that pressure is then bled off and it comes out of a hole here. Okay. That goes back into the engine. So. Yeah. There's a lot of talk of people messing around with oil pressure to raise it and lower it and stuff, but what they're doing is masking 
a problem with the unit internally. Mm. So yeah. if you leave that alone and the unit's functioning properly, all the seals are correct, solenoids are working, they work perfectly well. So. Yeah, that's I think what people sometimes forget, especially as cars get older, is they work from the factory. Yes, and they've worked for 20 years. Yeah. And sometimes we see these are 200,000 miles on, and other than some vanos noise and maybe some cold start issues or a bit of lumpy tick over, they mm. still work perfectly well. Yeah. So it, you are sometimes sort of messing for messing's sake and it doesn't yeah. work. So. But that's it essentially. Yeah. So we've got all the bits laid out there. Inlet and exhaust side. And as you said, comes air oil comes in um, from the one on the right. Through that. Yep. Through a passageway into that, generated through the oil pump around there, which generates its own pressure, which then yep. fires it through the unit to the pressure valve. You can see all the drillings. Oh, they've yeah. put the holes in through the filter, mm -hmm. through some more holes into the inlet piston. It then gets fed through the back to the exhaust piston into the solenoids, which then obviously control the gears going in and out. Yeah. Um, so the solenoids are basically letting the oil flow. It's just, just an oil control valve. Yeah. How it's told by the car at one point, right? I want to advance the exhaust cam to 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. It knows how much where the timing is in relation to the engine running, fires a solenoid, lets it out, cam sensor measures where it is, basically yeah. stops firing and it holds mm. it where it is. It doesn't have to fire it to stop it, it just fires it till it moves and then stays in that place. So, okay. Um, last issue we do see with these, which is mm -hmm. also reasonably common, is the oil pump itself can wear out inside of here. Okay. And where, where that slots over the top of the back there, we've seen little ball bearings come out which yeah. can lose oil pressure and also we've seen wear on the actual shaft here where the, ro the oil pump rotates around. Yep. That just means it loses pressure. Hmm. It's fine at high RPM usually, you know, because it spins fast enough to generate its own yeah. pressure, but normally you get issues that tick over, hmm. um, losing pressure on startup and it just means oil's bleeding off from around here. Yeah. And once that's happened, that unit is then scrap. Okay, so that's that is the one thing. That will scrap the unit, yeah. yeah. And it is a bit of a pain for us because they're getting hard to come by. So, yeah. Um, it isn't that common, but again, we do see it. Hmm. So, and it's usually on cars that haven't been serviced properly. Everything's black inside. Yeah, because as the oil gets yeah, breaks down and gets turns thick. into grinding paste, essentially. Yeah. So, yeah, on cars that are pristine inside with nice clean oil and hmm. regular oil changes, it's not so much of an issue. So, yeah. so it's not really a fault of the unit. It's more poor maintenance. Poor maintenance, yeah. Which yeah. is the vast majority of issues on these cars is poor maintenance. Yeah, because. So, yeah. Like they were cheap at one point. They were incredibly cheap at one point. They were very cheap. I remember doing these and people spending a thousand pound in the Vanos unit and they were selling the car for three. Yeah. And you think about it now, trying to find a three thousand pound M3 Evo is impossible. Well, you're not so, going to have much of it. No, no, you might get <laughs> your half an engine now. Yeah. So, yeah, they were really cheap. Um, as a result, of that people got them and didn't look after them, didn't change yeah. the oil, wondered why they were spinning bearings, mm. wondering why they were leaking oil. Yeah. It's a shame, really. But uh, all cars of any type, though, oil. Oil change is key for men. Yeah, 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 you can never overchange oil. No, no. from a 1.3 litre diesel to, you know, 6 litre V8 yeah. American muscle car, oil change is the key. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is now fully stripped down. Um, we, well, my original intention was we were going to rebuild it back up, but yep. you want to take this all away and clean this all up, which is fair enough. And I would like it to be all nice and clean as well, because the units you do do look brilliant. Yeah, we try and get them so they look like people are buying a reconditioned unit. Yeah. Because that, to me, doesn't look like a recon unit. I can put it back together. It would be functionally It'll perfect. It'll function absolutely fine, but to me, it doesn't look right. So yeah. we'll... Uh, so you're going to take that all away, yeah. uh, clean it all up? Ultrasonic clean everything, go through a hot wash, make sure there's no sort of grit or muck inside the unit. Hmm. You can't do a lot with the outside of the unit, really, but they are quite a nice finish from the factory. So once you get the yeah. oil and dirt off, it's better. The covers will vapor blast them, yep. new bolts throughout oil pump goes through the wash. So everything's fresh and clean. And yeah. Assembled with some assembly lube, so it's ready just to fit back on the car. So yeah, so what we'll do is, we'll come and see that process being done, yeah. of it being rebuilt basically, because yeah. then that yeah. will yeah. finish this up. But this is where we'll get to today. Yeah. Um, so you basically said there's no, you haven't seen any real obvious issues in this unit itself. Not particularly, no, there's nothing. The Obviously that, there was that snapped plastic ring, but you yeah, said that's pretty common. Common, so that'll get changed. We'll fit it with the new metal ring that we use and the circlip. All the bolts will be replaced. We'll clean the solenoids and test them. There's some minor wear to that solenoid edge there where it's mm -hmm. been twisting in the unit, but I don't think it's caused any marks. 
you can actually see the witness mark where it does it in there. It's quite difficult to see on camera, but let's have a look, see if we can. It's kind of to that side there. You can see it's just starting to sort of mark, but it's not the easiest to see. Yeah, I can't really see what you mean. No, but that's basically where that pick is. That's Oh, uh, maybe I can, yeah. There's a couple of sort of small grooves that aren't here. Yeah. That's where it is, so. Yeah, I can see like a, a silvery polish where the other side's yeah. kind of all golden. Yeah. Yeah. So it, that's normal. It, it, there's always a mark there, but there's no grooves. So that's a good thing. Yeah. But generally speaking, it is just what it is. It's a 100,000 mile unit. So. Yeah, because I think the only issue I really had, obviously people who followed the channel know the car made good power. Yeah. So I think the Vanos was actuating correctly. Yeah. It was just a noisy rattle, which yeah. is one of the things that you do. And there's, then that's a, a spring washer, you said, or something? There is. There's, there's two parts to the unit. So you've got the noise which comes from, if you take this off the car, mm -hmm. you've got the other part of the car on the head which creates the noise. Mm. The function comes from the unit itself. And that's a running issue or lack of power or lumpy tick over comes from what we've got here. Um, the noise side, there is kits out there that replace bearings inside of here in the splines. Yep. They make no difference whatsoever. Absolutely okay. nothing. We've never done them. We've tested them, we've tried them, and it doesn't make any difference. Is that if you went to BMW and bought these two parts brand new, or a new engine, they would come, as you see, a little bit of movement in the spline there, a little bit of play, but that's how they are brand new. And when they're new, they're quiet. Yeah. The issue is with them is with the spring plates, the diaphragm springs are called from BMW. Okay, yeah. These live in the back of the hubs that are bolted to the end of the cams. What happened, this one isn't particularly bad, but you can see the witness marks on that plate, on the spring washer. Yeah. And they live in the hub like that. Mm -hmm. And they create tension in the gear. Yeah, so they're, the they're just pushing against pushing it. Pushing against it, yeah. And basically when these wear, when they get really bad, we saw one this week, which was worn three quarters of the way down. Mm. And that was particularly noisy from cold. So you turn the key, diesel growling noise, marbles in the can, whatever you want to call it. It was doing that from the second you turn the key. Yeah. Normally, they'd only do it when they're hot. So the thing is to replace those parts with a slightly different tension spring plate. Yep. There are S62 ones out there, but we found that when you run a Vanos test or you put them on a the dyno, they're slightly too tight. And the reaction time of the unit is a bit slow. Yeah. So the, the trick of these are kind of halfway house in between these ones, which wear out prematurely because they're not tight enough. Yeah. And the S62, which is probably a bit too tight. Yeah, because it's just, it's basically putting too much pressure on the gears at yeah. that point. Yeah. So if there's too much tension on there, what happens is as the gear goes in and out and it tries to rotate the cam, it's also rotating against the hub. Yeah. And the tension is just a bit too tight. So the reaction time in and out slows mm. down. Yeah. Um, not an issue on a road car, but certainly on a race engine, you want the reaction time to be the fastest. Yeah, I can imagine once you've started lightening all the parts, yeah, that if can you've be got the... a lazy van off, you're going to start seeing that be an issue. Can't yeah, you? you can do, yeah. And if it's really tight, and say you've got a hub that isn't particularly worn mm. on a low mileage car and an S62 spring, what can happen is it can end up just too tight and you can actually feel a slight lag on the road. Yeah. So when the Vanos changes at 2200 on full throttle, you can have a slight delay. Yeah, because I suppose at that point it's almost it could be 100, 200 RPM behind kind of thing. Yeah, so the timing's is, not quite right. Yeah, I mean, essentially. I think the Vanos test, it, if it's less than, more than 250 milliseconds of reaction time, yeah, it, it fails the test. Mm. Um, so anything more than that, you start to feel it. So I think we've seen up to sort of half a second reaction time. Oh, wow. 500 milliseconds. Mm. It kind of, you can feel that ever so slightly when you put your foot down. So these we've worked out are the best compromise in tension and noise. There's no noise with these. Yeah. The bits we put in, we offer a lifetime warranty on them because mm -hmm. we know that they're never going to go noisy again. Uh, some of the cars have been done more than 10 years now and they're still quiet. Yeah. Um, and that sort of solves that issue in terms of noise. So you've got a noise problem, which is one half of the end on the top half of the cams. Yeah. And you've got your function side and your running issues and power problems, which come from yeah. essentially this half, which is the unit and sort of solenoid related. Yeah. So. yeah. All right. Brilliant. So that's all stripped down. Yep. And now you're going to get that all washed off. Get this cleaned, uh, we'll pop back, we'll rebuild it, yeah. do a video of the rebuild process and what gets put into it. It'll look completely different to the oily mess we've got right now. And yeah. then, um, yeah, it'll be ready to fit back to the car. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. As 
Steve's going to take all the vinyl stuff off to be fully cleaned. Thought it was a good idea to also get the head off so that you could take that away and have all that cleaned and also you want to skim it. Yep, reface the head ready for a new gasket. Yeah. Clean everything so it looks fresh. Um, keep on top of the old changes, it'll stay fresh forever as well. So. Yeah, because I don't think it's too bad, but obviously if no, you're, it's fine. It's you're doing all the jobs, you want it nice and fresh, don't you? For an E36 engine, there is a bit of brown in there, which would suggest it's probably not had as many oil changes as it should have done. Yeah. Um, the colour of the oil is a bit brown, but yeah, aside from that, it's just generally what you'd expect to see. So. Yeah. But while you're this far in, the engine's out, it makes total sense to put a head gasket on. Yeah. They do like to weep from the back of the head here. This one is ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. So with age, so it makes sense to do it now and then just uh, that's it really for the life of the car again. Yeah, that's the thing. I want to, I don't think I'm going to do, I've talked about it before, I don't want to get into the rotational assembly and you don't think there's any need to on an S50. No, none whatsoever. The bottom ends are really strong. These rods on these cars have got a nice wide rod bearing in comparison to an S54. Yeah. Um, a lot of people with race engines are putting S50 cranks and rods in them. Mm to give you a, a rider journal. So yeah. you've got more oil pressure and more oil film. Yep. Um, so generally speaking, put a set of rod bearings in it and uh, a new oil pump is a good idea. Yeah, I've done, I did the rod bearings pre-crash. Yeah. So, so they're okay. And yep. yeah, I'll do the oil pump. Be worthwhile putting the new oil pump in from BMW because it has a diamond coated oil pressure control plunger in. Yep. Um, really good upgrades for all S50 and 54 engines, the same oil pump. Yeah, just and a that, brand new oil yeah, pump. Yeah, it eliminates issues because there is an issue with the oil pump control plunger sticking in the in the housing. Okay. So the diamond light coated them and that stops that happening really. So, so is that an updated part from BMW then? It updated about 2015, I believe. Okay. Um, the part number for the oil pump has changed, oh, I've top my head, it's 11 or 12 times since 1996. Yeah. Same oil pump in this is, is the S54. Yeah. They went through a spell of trying a Teflon coated one made of aluminium, which really didn't work. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's why we see S54s mainly between 2004 and 6 and Z4s, they're spin shells. Yeah. Uh, oil pump pressure valve sticks on them. Yeah, and but it's just not getting enough oil pressure to the... Yeah, it sticks, so when you turn the key, there's not enough oil pressure. It just slowly but surely takes a bit of copper off, mm. eventually the spin. Uh, but the latest oil pump is fine. Okay. And if they've basically refined it to the point where they haven't changed it for five or six years now. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well worthwhile doing that. Yep, and then... Obviously, you're now getting the um, valve buckets. The valve called? buckets, yeah, with the shims on top. Uh, that's where the, the clearance is set. These little shims pop out. Yeah. That's how you adjust your valve clearance from the valve, from the cam, sorry, to the top of the valve. Yeah. So they will come out to get the head out. And then the valve clearances are something that we'll do when we put the engine back together. Yeah, when it's re re rebuilt, there will be a difference in the clearance from where it's set now. Um, yeah. Just the valves will be cleaned on the backs of the valves. There'll be no carbon there, so it will actually close up a little bit. So yeah, we'll just reset them as it goes together. Generally speaking, any time the cams are out, it's a good practice to redo the valve clearances. Yeah, so. I wanted to, um, regardless, but even before I was going to pull the engine apart, I wanted to do that just as yeah. a yeah. peace of mind, a little bit of maintenance, 100,000 yeah. mile engine kind of thing. Yeah, it's definitely a good idea. So, yeah. yeah. Right, and then I'm interested to, once these come out, we get to see what the bore looks like and if that's all okay. I don't think, I'm not expecting any problems. It made good power, it didn't use oil yeah. or coolant, so. I'm definitely not expecting any issues. This engine is bulletproof. The blocks are really good. Uh, only time you see damage in the bores is mainly S54s because the head gaskets crack and they detonate and sometimes mm. you get ring damage. When it cracks the ring, it wrecks the bar. Yep. But these don't suffer that problem. Um, they don't suffer from detonation. Yeah, so, so we'll see in a minute, but hopefully but I'm not expecting, and you're not expecting, so. Is the last of the over-engineered engines, so you've got a cam carrier, yep. which will come off now, which is bolted there, and then you've got the cylinder head underneath of it. Mm. You can see the join between the cam carrier and the head just there. Oh, so, yeah. So this will come off. That will give us access to the head bolts. Okay. Then we'll pull the head off and have a look inside. Okay, so it is two pieces, that's it interesting. It is two pieces, yeah. yeah. Yep just refined it over the years this is this design's been around since basically the m1 yeah back in the 70s they've used this kind of cam carrier and head design yeah e30 m3s e28s e34s all this design this is the last one that did it s54 went to a finger rock around arrangement mm -hmm. a bit easier to rev more lighter valve train yeah so. 
That Whoa. is cam carrier, intermediate housing. Yep. Whatever you want to call it. Again, pretty golden brown, but like you were saying, just oil changes and nothing to be too worried about in here. It's looking a bit darker. Yeah, a little bit. It's unusual for an S50 engine to be this dark, but again, it's not the end of the world. You know, yeah. it's, you see a lot, lot worse on the later cars than that. So yeah. this gives us access to the head bolts now, which you can see here. Where are all we? Yeah. Sorry, yeah, all the way there. Oh, yeah. Uh, you've got your valve springs, top of the valve here. Yeah. Your valve stem seals, which I know you've mentioned, they yeah, are... Yeah, I want to do the valve stem seals, because... Basically hidden inside the valve springs there. Okay. So you have to strip the head out, yep. move the valves, replace the seals. We'll de the back of the valves, lap them back in. Okay. And that'll give it a sort of factory fresh. Yeah, I think that's kind of where I want to go. I don't... I'm not aiming for a larger power or anything. No. Like, I just want a nice fresh... Yeah. Engine. Yeah, it's I mean, basically what you're doing. So they don't suffer from valve stem seals. These engines are really good, and like the later yeah. ones, which for some reason they do suffer from it. Yeah, uh, but it's just one of those things that's sensible is. to do. And while you're doing it, you might as well yeah. do it. Yeah, it's not yeah. A, it's not a huge job to do that now. Yeah. So there's no issue with valve springs on this engine. Standard revs and stuff like that. These mm -hmm. valve springs, absolutely fine. Yeah. The valve springs in this engine is actually a really good upgrade for an E30 M3. Oh, okay. So. They are the same as a Sport Evo M3, the 2.5, so that yep. shows how good these springs are in this engine. Mm. Uh, they were designed for a lot higher revs than what this engine will ever take. So. Yeah, there was a few things that I've noticed were clearly kind of motorsport leftover. So yeah. Yeah. when we did the manifolds, it had sensor holes yeah. for something that a road car would never need. But obviously they were doing, they were measuring exhaust gas temperature or... A lot of it's to do with balancing as well, so you can balance each individual cylinder. Yeah. So there was a lot of to do with that, but... By now, most of them are rusted up and the heads have snapped yeah. off. Yeah, so. I mean, you can see them, like, they are on there. Like, the ECU that this came with could never yeah. take any information, so it's clearly a leftover. But what they used to do in the factory as well is they would balance the throttle bodies and they would measure the individual cylinder yep. mixture to mm. make sure it was correct, so you could balance individual throttles, where nowadays it's all electronic and done through lambda sensors and yeah, that's much one more thing. computer controlled now. But back in this was sort of really mechanical... Um, yeah straightforward sort of old school yeah balancing the throttle bodies is one thing so i want to clean all the throttle bodies yeah. and then i've got to figure out how to either not unbalance them or learn how to rebalance them and if you don't touch any of the set screws then generally they're still balanced but yeah. there, there is a really sort of elaborate process to, to do check. with them um it's quite straight it's just time consuming mm. straightforward you know the bmw instructions tell you how to do it yeah, yeah, yeah. it is relatively straightforward it just yeah. takes a bit of time so yeah. but generally, as a rule if you don't mess around with the set screws yeah Unless you're running a tuned engine, generally speaking, it's Yeah, minimal. I just want to give them a clean out. I'm not too worried about stripping them down. Yeah. Again, they, yeah. they all actuated fine. Yeah. yeah. Just want to clean them down and re-oil them kind of thing. Like. Yeah, just give them a good clean. Put them, we generally put them through a hot wash. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much all we do. It gets all the carbon off the back of the flaps okay. and stuff like that. Cleans everything out. But generally, because it's, it's not a direct injection engine, yeah, they're not that dirty. They're kept clean, so yeah. you haven't got the issues of the modern cars with direct injection with the valves yeah. being carbon and stuff like yeah. that, so the fuel does the work as it goes in. So. Yeah. Um, next step is head bolts out and then pull the head off. All right, okay, let's get on to it. You can actually see that it has been leaking. Yep. Which is the common area they use, always seem to go at the back of the head gasket for... I'm not quite sure why yeah. they do it, but it's just an age-related thing. And it's kind of the last engine that used a composite gasket rather than an MLS steel one. Mm -hmm. uh, so it has been leaking there, definitely. Yeah. So well, everything looks good. All the valves are nice and clean. Yeah. There's no hot spots anywhere. No marks on them. Nothing. They've been running slightly hotter, those two, you can see than those. A little bit whiter in colour, but again, that looks perfectly, perfectly yeah. normal, that. I mean, I suppose the thing is, without having control of every bank's mixture, you might get two cylinders running a little bit leaner than... Yeah, it just, it's just the way they are. There's nothing, nothing worn in there at all. Everything looks absolutely fine. So. Yeah. You can see on the top of there where it's been leaking the head gasket as well. Oh, yeah, because you can see where it's now wet still. Yeah, and you've got sort of a clean a bit there where it's just not quite sealed against the gasket properly. But, yeah. Uh, and no. then it's an initial look at the top of the... Nice and clean. 
It's had good fuel there. There's no carbon build up on there. Yeah. No oil residue, so it's not burning oil. What I can see though, which is again a common thing with this engine. Mm -hmm. Spin it over. At some point, the end of a spark plug's been off. Oh, because you've got some of the damage. Oh yeah. I'm presuming a spark plug, but these engines, I've seen a lot of cars where the spark plug tip has gone. Yeah. Or something's been dropped in the cylinder, but I would say normally it's to do with the spark plug tip coming off. Yeah. They were quite bad for it at some point. Um, but that's not a worrying... It just means something's been in there. Yeah. I have seen that a lot on these E36 engines, especially this particular S51. Mm. We do see the odd piston where the tops are damaged. Yeah. So, um, sometimes on S54s, but mainly on these. Mm. Um, without actually finding the part which has long gone down the exhaust oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> you're never going to know but we generally think it is a spark plug tip. Yeah. Yeah. something off the end of a spark plug has mm. gone through there um, potentially something's gone through the air box maybe mm. a small stone or a bit of grip but yeah. it's highly unlikely it's made it that far yeah, so, yeah. Um, I would say a spark plug but you know, looking at the bars really nice condition yeah. st still see the cross hatch on there on all of them so lovely yeah it's exactly what I would expect to see with this engine, with an iron block, you know, they just, they don't... I suppose that's the thing, it's not, they're not going to particularly... No. They're not yeah. very, they're not a highly stressed engine, really. The, the output's quite high for the literage, but it's not a very highly stressed block. Yeah. The good old-fashioned engineering, so... Balls are good, cross hatching's there, good condition. So you think, at that point, I'm okay to just leave pistons, rings, all that kind of stuff, yeah, like, there's, there's no need to go any further than this. No, there's no evidence of any scarring in the cylinder which would suggest a broken ring. Yeah. Um, all the pistons are in even colour, so you wouldn't say one's been running massively lean in the other, which yeah. would cause detonation, which can lead to a broken ring. Mm. You said there's no oil consumption, yeah, no not. power issues, so yeah, that, for me that is just reface the top of the block, clean it up, yeah. ready for the new gasket, get as good as, you know, perfect condition, yeah. paint the block, and that's all we would do with that, really. Yeah, and yeah. then the main bearings on these are okay? Main bearings never go wrong. Okay. I've never seen that's it. Just, it's the same main bearing in this as it is in a 316 Compact, believe it or not. Yeah. Same part number. And the, because it's a rotational on a main rather than a reciprocating on a rod bearing, mm -hmm. there's no wear to them. Yeah, So okay. you sometimes see a little bit of wear if it's spun a rod bearing because they've yeah. all been starved to the journal, but... Again, they're just, it's not an issue, so. Yeah. Okay. Um, you could do it if you wanted to do that and yeah. polish the crank, but to be honest, for a standard no, road build, it's just completely... The thing is, I looked at that and then the price just starts to get higher and higher. It does, and there's no, there's no reason. I would, just, if this was my engine, it was going in a road car that was a daily, yeah. I wouldn't do it. If I was building a nice trick race engine, you put main bearings yeah, in and polish yeah. the crank, but for where you are with what you want to do for this, yeah, no. main bearings are fine. Um, you've done the rod bearings and that's really yep. it, so. Alright, that's excellent news then. Yep, nothing aside from that. Worth putting a new timing chain on, so pull the front cover off at some point. Yep. Replace the timing chain. You do have on this engine, you can see there's a pin which is bolted to the front of the block. We do see this quite a lot, a lot on the three litres actually. Yeah. This pin snaps off and that guide actually ends up flapping around a bit. Okay. And it is a major job to do if you've got nothing wrong with the engine. Yeah. And all you've got to do is change that pin. But while you're here, you might as well buy two it's new worth pins, doing. change the guide, replace the rubber bush in there, put the timing cover back on. Yeah. With a new chain. So I think timing chain wise I'm gonna probably just do everything. I know you don't think it's all necessarily worth it, but I am kind of a bit like yeah. I'm this far in. You may as well. The guides are expensive and the guides on these don't wear out. They yeah. are Again, sort of old school engineering, aluminium guide with a good quality plastic on. The newer stuff just falls apart okay. over 50,000 miles on some of the diesels. But yeah. this is back when everything was engineered properly to a, yeah. to a standard, not a cost. But yeah, if you want to do it, you're in this fire and it makes sense. But yeah, it's like that seems worth worthwhile. doing it. But like I looked at doing the rotational and that was like a few thousand pounds extra. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like... Yeah, I mean, the, the main bearings aren't a lot of money to do. Yeah. It's just the extra work involved. But yeah. I personally wouldn't do it on this it just doesn't yeah. seem worth it you know there's yeah. nothing there's no damage in there that is worth for what you're going to do with the car there's nothing there that's yeah and honest. again that would mean then taking the whole block up to you yeah and then paying you to do it <laughs> which is not a bad thing for me but yeah yeah i, I don't think it's worth it i really no. don't for what your what your intentions are with the car you just do the top end do the van put a chain on it yeah a new oil pump back together with a fresh head gasket yeah um, and nothing the car will do another 100,000 miles without breaking the sweat. So. All right, I think that's brilliant then. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so that is everything off. Obviously, we got the van off all done. The engine's now stripped down. It's all going to go up with you. Yep, we'll get and it loaded up, put it in the we'll box. We'll see it all when it's all lovely and fresh and yep. ready to go back together. Yeah, not a problem. All right, excellent. Well, cheers again for your help, Steve. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, thanks for having me down. It's been a yeah. good day. So. Well, there's only one person to choose, and it is Mr. Vanoff. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate uh, yeah. that. Thanks to everyone for watching. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you liked the video, please remember to smash that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. If you want to join the conversation, please drop a comment below and we'll try our best to respond to you. If you want to watch more of this project, you can do so over here. If you want to watch what YouTube thinks you might like from our other content, you can do so over here.